Safety is the key, and something like this really works out well. I had a hard time trying to do some decoration on a bowl and coming up with grooves that were equally spaced. And I was trying to do it by hand, and I couldn't figure out a decent way of of orienting, orienting it. So I added a vacuum chuck to my lathe. I don't have the vacuum here, so we're just going to have to kind of imagine things a little bit. The bowl would fit in here, and I would able, am able to use the uh, indexing on the lathe so that these would be equally spaced. And I came up with this table that fits into the bands, the banjo. This is not going to fit because it, it, uh, it's made for my lathe rather than this one. But you can set it on center, adjustable for height. And then you can take your Dremel or grinding tool and uh, put on the lathe and uh, set this at any angle you want and then you can just uh, cut the grooves, rotate it uh, through the, uh, the keying on your lathe so that the grooves all come out even all the way around. And uh, it ends up being very versatile. You can change the height, you can change the, uh, you're not worried about the diameter of the piece, um, and it's, it's movable so you can, you can set it at any angle for any piece you want to do. And I put a stop collar on it so that it always stays on center on my lathe. Um, it won't do that on this lathe, but um, can lock it in place and it works really well. Uh, not really. I just do a little bit at a time, and, and uh, um, you can put any cutter in you want to, to do it, and it works really well. I just locked this in place, a little jig that I made with uh, just a, a board and a piece of plastic, and uh, the threads on the, drilled a hole in the plastic for the, for the threads to go through, and uh, this just screws on and locks in place. And... Uh, all the Dremels have this feature on the front end of them, so you can use a standard Dremel tool. If you have a battery-powered Dremel, you can make one. I just strap it on with a piece of Velcro. I use... Um, I use these little stop collars all the time. They're cheap. They cost like a buck a piece. You put it on your banjo or on your tailstock. You can set the height of your tailstock up, lock it in place, and if you want to turn it, you're still, you still end up with it on center all the time or at the level you want. And uh, I found that uh, the threads on, on most of these stop collars are 3 8 16 so if you go buy a 3 8 16 bolt, you can, you can buy a, or you can make yourself a, a nut to uh, lock things in place. And then your, your, uh, uh, you, you always end up with a, it locked in at the height that you want, and it's, it's not difficult to change if you want to change it. Uh, they, they make some of those that have an over center latch on them where you don't have to have the bolt, but they're not cheap. No, they're not cheap. <laughs> this, this is a 39 cent bolt and a dollar stop collar. And, 30 bucks right yeah, and so uh, these work really well. Um, excuse me? Where do you get the stop collar? Um, a lot of hardware stores like Ace Hardware will carry them. Uh, I bought a bunch of them on eBay. Um, and I, the best price I found was eBay. 
Uh, ENCO and MSC also sell them, the, the tool supply catalogs. Um, but I only paid like a buck a piece for them on eBay, so they're really cheap. Um, I found that these uh, captive 5A16 uh, nuts work really well. My, my favorite tool is a one-way tool that is a double-ended tool. So I sharpen both ends, and as I'm turning, I lock one end in place, and when it gets dull, it's the easiest to turn it around and just keep on going rather than having to go to the grinder or find an Allen wrench to, uh, to set it up. And these are so easy to make that, uh, that um, it, it just makes turning so much faster and easier. And, and I've gotten so used to them that I know where the, everything is. They fit my hand now. And I don't have a problem with, uh, with the tools falling out or any of that. No, this standard, on this particular handle, that's a standard size uh, set screw. So these have not been re-drilled and re-tapped. And they work really well. Just locks it in place and, and uh, you go ahead and start turning. A couple months ago, our friend Neil Brand talked about uh, in turning spindles. He showed using a collet chuck as a chuck for his spindles when he was turning it. He put a, a drill pin or a uh, dowel pin in it, put it in his headstock, and it worked really well. Um, one of the things we were fighting or I know Neil was fighting, and I was too, is drilling the hole in the piece we were doing and, and drilling it accurately. And we found out that, well, why not use the same device for drilling? So you can put this in your tailstock. I made a dowel with a hole in it that would fit over the drill. You pound it in, and now you have a very solid, short drill bit that, that you can drill very, very accurate holes with. And uh, it won't come out, and yet all you need to do is crank, crank it out, and, and you've got it. So these, these collet chucks work really well. They come in various sizes. Um, I've got about five or six different sizes. Uh, if you're going to use it for drilling, you've got to be very specific about the size hole you're drilling. But it gives you an extremely accurate hole because of the way these are built. There's uh, very, little, very little vibration. And, and you can set the, uh, the depth of the drill to any depth that you want. And uh, just pound them in, and and they're locked in place, and uh, you go from there. Any, so that's a lot more accurate than a drill chuck. It's yeah. extremely more accurate than a drill chuck. Yeah, it is very much so. The problem, with, the problem with doing that is you still have a drill sticking out of that, that's about that long, and it will tend to follow grain, uh, particularly if you're, turning, if you're drilling end grain. And with this kind of a collar chuck where you can control the length of that drill down to a very short portion, um, it, it won't tend to follow the grain while you're drilling, so you get a much more accurate hole. Than, uh, than you do anywhere else. Mm -hmm. 
Not always. Not always. Um, Neil and I have done a lot of experimenting with, with trying to accurately drill a quarter inch hole in a one inch block. And if you do it with a drill that's a standard jobber length drill bit, it will follow grain. Even if we use a, a center drill to start with, at the other end, it may not be true, a true hole. And um, we found that drilling with, with the, this kind of a chuck, collar chuck or whatever you want to call it, works, works really, really well and gives you the most accurate hole we can find. ENCO sells uh, quarter inch and three-eighths three inch high-speed steel rod. And they do it rather inexpensively. These rods uh, are eight inches long by quarter inch in diameter, and they're like two dollars and eighty-five cents. And it's high-speed steel, so you can make all kinds of tools. I don't know where this. Can you go overhead? There we go. Let me move some of this out of the way. You can make um, you can make tools out of them, and you can make them in any shape you want. Uh, this is a, a real sharp point tool that I made uh, with a flat on it, and I'll pass these around. Um, this is a a skewgy gouge made out of out of this quarter inch rod, and this is a skew made out of it. And uh, they make absolutely wonderful little tools. They stay sharp a long time, and they're very, very inexpensive. So it's something you might want to consider. The ENCO. They've got a huge tool catalog, and uh, you'll find these the, these rods in their uh, in their their tool bit portion of the catalog. And uh, unfortunately, the 3 8 inch only comes in a 4-inch length, so you have to be a little more selective on what you use for uh, making tools out of it. But the, uh, the quarter inch comes in these 8-inch eight eight inch long packages, and uh, they make absolutely wonderful tools for, for very small work, um, hollowing out. No, if you order really small quantities, the, the ship two or three is not a problem. But shipping is going to eat you alive. So um, I've been buying it with with uh, you know I, I buy the drill rod, one inch drill rod from them as well. So if I'm if I'm putting an order in for something, then I'll I'll always buy a few of these tools as well. Just to have on hand because I use a lot of them and I use them a lot. One last thing, and this is this is really kind of immaterial, but if you ever have problems trying to keep track of your sandpaper, um, this device is from Home Depot. They use it for holding paint brushes on a paint can. It's a magnet, so it stays in place. And it's a clip. And it is just ideal for holding a whole bunch of sandpaper. And you can put it anywhere on your lathe. You always know where it is. You use your sandpaper, you put it back on, and it's, it's always where you want it. You could do that. I just number the back sides of them. And then they're all in order. I use them, put them back in the clip. They're always on the lathe where I need it. Or on the side of the lathe, doesn't matter. Works really well. So that's all I have. Somebody else have some some tips that they like to share with us? <laughs>